Okay, everyone, let's continue looking at module 26206-23, Conductor Installations in the NCCER 11th edition. This will be section 2.00, High Force Cable Pulling. High Force Cable Pulling. During high force pulling, you must study the raceway to ensure it will accommodate the conductors, Ensure the conductors and pulling rope are matched to the pulling equipment and that the equipment has the proper capacity. Determine the best places to set up for pulling and have enough workers. A cable length meter can be used to ensure that there is enough cable for a run. Keep enough lubricant on hand and use it before and during a pull. Note that gripping must be adequate to handle the, the imposed force. The entire operation must be supervised from start to finish with communications equipment used on both ends of the pool. Feeding end of the pool. Ropes should be selected based on the expected force of the pool. Ropes should, be, should have at least four times the strength of the required pulling force. The feed setup should unreal the cable along its natural curvature. Sheaves must be positioned to ensure that the curvature is smooth and that the cables are deflected evenly at each one. Supporting vertical conductors. Conductors and vertical raceways must be supported. The spacing of supports is based on the conductor wire size and material. Braking systems should always be used on long vertical cable pulls. Caution. When installing conductors in a vertical raceway, install proper support before removing the pulling equipment or cutting the conductor at each end. Warning. Guard against runaways on all vertical pulls. Make certain that proper braking equipment is used to stop a conductor fall should a runaway occur. Pulling in cable trays. Pulling long lengths of cables in cable trays is challenging and must be well planned. Short lengths of cables must be laid in place or pulled in with a basket grip. Pull large cables by the conductor and the braid of the sheath. Pull exerted on, pull exerted on cables with a basket grip should not exceed 1,000 pounds. The bend radius of cable trays should never be less than the values recommended by the manufacturer. The best results are obtained by pulling the cable in one continuous operation at a speed of 20 to 25 feet per minute. The diameter and length of pulling line depend on the pull being made and the tools and equipment available. Sheaves must be supported in the opposite direction of the pull. And some trade terms you should read over and become familiar with for this module. And some review questions for this module. If the estimated pulling force is 800 pounds, the pulling rope should be rated for no less than 800 pounds, 1,600 pounds, 2,400 pounds, or 3,200 pounds. And I'm going to say 3,200 pounds. If the estimated pulling force is the requirements for intermediate conductor supports can be found in NEC Table 310.15B16, NEC Chapter 9, Table 8, NEC Table 402.3, or NEC Table 300.19A. Now I'm going to go with NEC Table 300.19A. Armor cable should have a bend radius of no less than twice its diameter, three times its diameter, five times its diameter, or eight times its diameter. I'm going to say five times its diameter. All right, that's it for that section. The next section will be 3.00, Cable Limitations When Pulling, and I'll see you over there.